I want to start first by by just asking you. Um, I'm not sure if you watch the Olympics now that you're not competing in them anymore. But if you if you do, uh, what are your initial thoughts of, of the Tokyo Games so far in the first four or five days? Uh, obviously, initially, the coverage is just a little different. Yeah. Um, you know, so getting access to see when things are on is getting a little bit more confusing. Right. You know, if you don't have if you if you're sort of um, unplugged and using an Apple TV or different things like that used to be to switch on the TV and NBC was on there, one of the primary channels. And so I think just initially the coverage and um, the accessibility to the general public, a lot of people say, well, that was on. I didn't realize that was on. Yeah. You know, I think prioritizing in terms of what had happened with COVID and TV time, I think a lot of people were inside so much. Now they're moving back outside. So you're not seeing as much hype and energy around the opening as you normally would with that sort of delay there. Um, adding skateboarding in was interesting because I was a big skateboarding fan and that was my first sport in my youth, but the way that it was sort of set up and being the first event, I think most people just miss that too. It just sort of came really quickly out of the blue. I think a lot of people who have seen it, um, you know, you're seeing a lot of stuff through social media now and getting this sort of instantaneous, um, updates. And so right. it's hard to want to sit through and watch the entire thing when you can just like find out the result really quickly. Yeah. So I think it, 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 in that sense, I feel bad for the athletes because you used to have more of a build up and anticipation and what was going to happen. And um, so it helped play out the stories of the athletes a little bit more because you, you mostly generally just hear about the, the medalists, you know, and the, and the top contenders. But there's so, so many interesting stories that I wish there was this huge, long build up into helping you identify these athletes so you can become a fan of them because most of them are just sort of off training um, places you've never heard of intensely for years. That's why they're not out in the public eye as much. That's, that's really an excellent point. You know, I, I think you hit on it. I, I, I'm guilty of this too. I think we tend, when we think of the Olympics, we tend to think of the medal winners because that's usually what we see, but you're right. I mean, there's so many other athletes that go there and, and they may never even see the finals or, or they may not qualify for an event there or whatever, but yet they're Olympians, you know, and the stories of what, what it took for them to get there uh, are, are very real. So that, that's an excellent point. Yeah. Point and, on the, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, Joseph, go ahead. What were we going to say? One more point on the current Olympics is uh, obviously the fans not being allowed to be in attendance there as, as an athlete yourself and a former Olympian, is that something that you think would have affected you in one way or another, or when you're competing, is it just all focused? You don't really care who or who is not in attendance. I mean, in, in my personal case, I fell in the 04 Olympics. So I was distracted by the crowd. Because, because it was such a big crowd and uh, such a high pressure day. So in some senses, you know, different events, it might lend to uh, a more comfortable performance. And, you know, others, if you're someone who feeds off the crowd, like Usain Bolt, you, you don't have that. Who are you going to pose in front of the camera? You know right, I mean? you don't, right. He gets sort of amped up off of the crowd. You know, the other point that I was going to make, too, was. Sure everyone's looking at the medal count like right away. We haven't had a count like this since this, you know, and so the emphasis has always been, like you said, on the medals and not like this individual sort of story. So when I fell in the 04 uh, Athens Olympics, it was in the preliminary race and I was in amazing shape. And one of the coaches said, just don't take the lead in the prelim, please save your energy for the final. So I was sort of convinced to do that, even though it's not my style, I like the front run and see the hurdles. So I, I, I've made a mistake with the pressure and the change in my normal plan, but I was walking around the Acropolis, the Parthenon, um, there in Athens, Greece, which is, you know, the quintessential Olympic spot, the, you know, <laughs> I mean, like the center of the universe for this. And I had a mohawk and, you know, camouflage shirt, my credential and was sitting there and a gentleman came up and grabbed both hands and said, you, you get up. And I thought I was in a restricted area, but he was just telling me like he had seen me on TV fall on the race, get back up. And the Greek TV sort of zoomed in on that and played out that story. Whereas this, that second that happened, the U.S. cameras just turned away. Like, oh, no medal here. Right. You know what I mean, right. so it was the interesting, um, you know, dichotomy of what the Olympics means in the place it was born, <laughs> you know, generated out of. And then what it became for the rest of the world 